seen the TV show The League? Yes. Yep. Yes. It kind of <laughs> reminds me of where you watch their videos, go back and forth on the message boards. You're listening to Let's Talk Fantasy Football, where men of fantasy genius have realized. Hey guys, we don't need real football skills to dominate on the fantasy field. So slap on your pads and grab your helmet. Shit's about to get real. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Let's Talk Fantasy Football. I am your host, Nick Trek, and we have a very special edition coming at you guys today. Courtesy of Media, I'm joined here by Jeff and William, here to tell us, tell you guys all about Media. We're going to talk some fantasy football. We're going into big the big draft weekend, guys, and NFL is almost here. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it, Nick. Excited, man, to be here. Uh, follow you guys all the time. Appreciate it. Appre- appreciate the kind words, guys. Acre- appreciate it. We're pumped to have you here. We're excited about what you've got going on. Uh, we saw you guys, uh, you know, out at the uh, National Fantasy Football Convention there, uh, kind of t- showing off the app. And uh, we're excited we finally got you on and uh, to talk a little bit about it. But before we jump into the show, guys, we want to give a shout out to View Picks, uh, who's the podcast sponsor. They're the revolutionary app that allows you to play fantasy football live while watching the game on TV. Predict the plays, the result of the play, and literally play fantasy football. You can sign up for the beta now by going to letstalkfantasyfootball.com backslash view pick. So, all right, guys, we're here with media. Jeff, William, we're going to throw you the floor because I don't think I can give the app justice and kind of tell people about it the way it deserves to be told. So tell everybody what you got going on. Well, what media does, it allows you to make your own press conference. If you are any type of fantasy football player, you one, you love to talk crap uh, to your rest of your league and whoever – uh, but man, I've been playing for so long and just trying to talk crap on the message boards and all the time. Ty- I'm not a great typer. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's okay. You know, between typing and sending memes and everything else, you know, I was like, hey, if we're going to do this, let's do this thing like the pros do. Let's do it like the actual sport does it. Let's have a true press conference where we have uh, somebody asking you a question. You respond exactly the way you want to. Uh, you just killed somebody. You want to blow them up, you know, put them on blast, send it to the whole league, let them know that you're about to dominate, you know, the whole season. Injuries happen, you know, all kind of, there's always content to talk about. And it's a great way of, uh, you know, staying in contact with all your buddies. Uh, You know, like I said, it's much better than sending a text, sending an email. They get to see you. uh, They get to see you point at them and talk crap to them and, you know, just wait for a great response that everybody can jump in on. But that's what it is. We allow a bunch of different backgrounds, all kind of things, just so you can get it as real as you want and uh, basically look like you are a real GM. That's the whole point of it. I, I love it. I, I don't think I don't think it gets any better because you know everyone can't be together twenty four seven. You know, you always hope to do a live draft with your buddies, and when you do it, but after that, everyone goes their separate ways. Life gets in the way. But this allows you to literally hold kind of your own press conference 24 seven to literally talk smack. Um, And, you know, it kind of reminds me of uh, you guys seen the TV show, the league. Yes. Yes. It kind of (laughs) reminds me of where you watch their videos, go back and forth on the message boards and, you know, we'll leave what they say off the air here, but um, you know, it kind of brings to me that, that emotion and fire where you can literally just say whatever you want and put it out there for everybody. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to throw it into my league this year for 2017 because we've done a lot of, like you said, we type things out on Facebook and you put the posts up, um, but there's nothing better than showing your face, showing the emotion. Um, it, it's the ultimate, really, the ultimate victory as far as I can say. That's exactly it, Nick, man. It's just when you saw Taco or anybody else, man, doing a rant, you know, we wanted to go ahead and do that, but basically actually have questions just like the coaches get and just like the players get just like the GMs get. And that way you can go ahead and let your comic genius or whatever it is. You can actually be serious about it, man. Hey, I've had uh, uh, seasons where I've had my main guy go down and it just crushed my whole uh, season. So I was serious about that. <laughs> oh, <I'll- laughs> Happened to whoop somebody, man. Hey, I wanted to let you know my team is superior uh, and I beat you with uh you know, having a, a B-rated quarterback, you know, that, oh. that week. So, Oh, yeah. It's the, it's the Ted Ginn touchdown that goes for 99 yards <laughs> that wins. It gets you the win by one point, and you're just like, I knew it. Go. I knew I was going to crush you. 
Josh McCown right. while he was with the Cleveland Browns. I've had to play him <laughs> in my league. That's how bad it's been. Well, you're still here today, today to tell the tale, and uh, I can only imagine they would have been some fun videos to watch, and now we literally can watch the videos with media. Um, you know, one of the things I, I do love here, Jeff, and, and the things I'm seeing is you guys integrate directly, it looks like, it with some of the most popular fantasy sites and with social so people can share the videos easily everywhere. Is that right? That is correct. That is correct. Uh, we wanted to make sure, even on our website, that we were able to put up the uh, instructions so that people can go ahead and easily find their way of dropping that post uh, on the message board. Uh, we've got a bunch of other things that are going to come up as well that makes the, uh, the app easier to use and easier to share. Great. So anybody can get this. You guys are, uh, are you on uh, Android and uh, Apple? We are in the App Store right now. Great. Uh, for the Apple platform, we are working on the Android platform as we speak, and we're hoping that it's going to be ready, uh, hopefully by the tail end of September. Uh, okay. But yeah, definitely in the App Store. Awesome. So those of you guys out there with iPhones, iPads, the whole gig, go download uh, the media app, start doing your own press conferences. You're going to feel like a media star. You don't need a TV station anymore. You can do it yourself. Um, and for those of you that are actually famous and popular, uh, while I don't know if you're listening to us here at Let's Talk Fantasy Football quite yet, if you are, you can cut out all the media crap here uh, in real life by doing it with the media app. Um, so we definitely want you guys to check it out. From here, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to hear from View Picks, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk some fantasy football, some NFL news. We've got Vikings and Seahawks fans here with us, and I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of emotion coming. This year, dominate your friends with free play-by-play fantasy football from ViewPick. ViewPick is the first play-to-play fantasy football game where you crush your friends from the comfort of your own couch. For the first time in fantasy football, you must think like the players and coaches on the field as you predict the outcome of every play. Visit ViewPick.com, V-U-P-I-Q.com, and sign up now for an invitation to beta test. All right, guys, and we are back. I'm here joined by Jeff and William here from Media, and you just heard all about the Media app. It's in the Apple App Store. Go download it now. Do your own press conferences. Literally talk smack. Do everything that you could ever want to do. It is literally like having your own TV station on your phone. Uh, but guys, let's talk some NFL, some fantasy football. Um, I heard the emotion in your guys' voices before we came on the air talking about the Vikings, the Seahawks. Um, tell me, who is somebody that? Well, let, let's start with let's start with you, uh, William. Since you know we talk a little media here with Jeff, who's somebody you really love this year in fantasy football? Is there a certain guy you're targeting late, whether he's early. Who's your guy this year? Some, you, you always fall in love with somebody. I'm going to go with uh, the rookie running back, Devontae Cook, for Minnesota Vikings. I just think, you know, he brings a new level of play for the Vikings, especially with Sam Bradford, who, if anybody watched Sunday night's games, this guy is about a three-yard completion, and that's why he has an 80% uh, completion rate. But I think they're going to move to Cook. They're going to use him out of the backfield, and no offense to Adrian Peterson, but you know, Adrian had hands of stone and couldn't catch the ball. His life depended on it. And so, you know, this brings a new dimension. Uh, so I would go with Cook, but I also got to like Hunt in, in Kansas City with the injury. Uh, you know, you got to trust uh, Andy Reid and believe that he's going to bring the ball. They're going to work him until he can't walk probably. Yep. And he'll probably get a ton of catches and a ton of receptions. Fair enough. I mean, again, in, on the the uh, Kareem Hunt love, the only thing you can – you can trust Andy Reid with a lot of things. You can't trust him with clock management, but you can trust him <laughs> to at least give the ball uh, to his back and work him. And with the wear injury, I agree. I think I, lo- I like Hunt a lot. Um, I think he's worth his price. He shot up like four rounds um, since mm-hmm. since the wear injury, and he's going right around the end of the – where is he? The fourth. Uh, 12th pick in the third round, according to Fantasy Football Calculator. And that's a price I'm okay with because I think mm-hmm. running back is a total it's a total crapshoot after you get mm-hmm. past McCoy, depending on who you talk to. Um, again, I'm a little less optimistic than Cook. Again, I'm not a Vikings fan, so <laughs> I may be biased on the Chiefs, but, you know, it, that's fair enough. Um, do, are you okay? Let me ask you then because, you know, I'm okay with Hunt's ADP. Again, that may be my Chiefs bias showing through, mm-hmm. but that's who we are here. Let's talk fantasy football. Um Dalvin Cook, are you okay with him being the first pick in the third round in 12-team PPR leagues? Because that's his ADP right now. No. No, I I think that's a little too much optimism. But I also think, you know, the the real-life NFL starts to reflect fantasy, and fantasy reflects the real life. You know, everybody's devalued running backs for so long in the NFL that now – 
here you are in fantasy. And to me, you're not sure who to pick outside of Johnson. Honestly, to me, Johnson's the only safe pick at running back. I, yes, Pittsburgh, you know, hold out running backs who hold out end up getting hurt. Yep. And then Devontae Freeman, the, the, um, concussion issue the last two weeks in training camp i mean do you really risk him in as your top five pick and especially in a ppr league i you know so i don't know i wouldn't take him in the third i think there's some wide receiver value there in the third that i would take at the top of the the round especially in pbrs but that's just me i agree so from the other side here you know jeff what do you think what is your take on dalvin cook from the outside here because you're not a vikings fan i'm not a vikings (laughs) fan uh what's your opinion oh my gosh well I think that he is going to um, definitely burst on the scene with the Vikings. I, I just, I think they're going to use him uh, a couple of different ways. I do think in third round is a little bit too high. Uh, you know, I was actually trying to target him around the sixth round or so. Um, but I think he's going to catch the ball out of the backfield. Uh, I think they're going to try to use him in between the tackles. I think they're going to try to do whatever they can. The only thing I'm worried about is him not getting the uh, ball around the goal line. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. Fair, fair, total, totally fair. I mean, you look back, literally, we're recording, guys, August 29th. Uh, a, a month ago, July 29th, he was the 10th pick in the fifth round. So he's come up freaking uh, almost, you know, whatever. That's two and a half rounds, almost three mm-hmm. rounds. So. His ADP has skyrocketed, and I think a lot of that can be attributed to you look at, you know, recency bias with Ezekiel Elliott. Again, mm-hmm. great talent, great offense. That was a it's a very unique situation, but everyone wants to believe that the rookie they're gonna draft is the next Ezekiel Elliott. And he may be down the road as a rookie. I just I, I don't know. I think him, I look at uh Christian McCaffrey, even Fournette, who's very talented, but I don't know. I, I don't know that I buy it because their workloads can be I think suspect, mm-hmm. you got Latavius Murray in, in Minnesota. I think really Kareem Hunt, and again, I'm Chiefs biased, but he at least is getting the workload now. Um, well, right. well, let's throw a name out there, Derrick Henry. So how long in the season before Henry's the starting running back? Because anybody watching the preseason, and I love DeMarco Murray, I really do, yeah. on fantasy, you have to think that Derrick Henry's the starting running back by week eight. He is – it's it's just a different feel to that team when they're when he's in there playing running back and are the Titans really gonna not go with a hot hand? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, uh, I think it becomes more of a timeshare than a lot of people want or expect it to be mm-hmm. because you look they had Eric Decker, Mariota. You know, as long as he continues to progress and look good coming back from the injury, that offense is going to be really good. And if they're not seeing mm-hmm. it from Demarco Murray, and like you said, if Henry is that hot hand they would be very foolish to ignore it. And I think at some point it has to go that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, where is, I don't even know where Henry's being drafted right now. Let's say sixth pick in the seventh round. So he's in <laughs> LeGarrette Blunt, Theo Riddick territory. Uh, Imagine the names you just said. Theo yeah. Riddick, LeGarrette Blunt, and Derek Henry, that if DeMarco Murray wasn't on the team, Derek Henry's probably a top five pick. Maybe a top 10 pick in, in a lot of drafts, even PPR. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And it's the gamble of do you believe he gets the opportunity mm-hmm. earlier, sooner rather than later? Because mm-hmm. if it if the switch is week eight, realistically, you've probably made a uh, – you're, you're either in the playoffs or you're out. You may be on the, right. on the line, but you've either – you're one in one in seven or whatever, or you're, you know, six and two. Um, so, again, it's a gamble. If you can get him a little bit later, throw him on your bench or mm-hmm. trade for him later on, could be some value. Um, but, yeah, I mean – Again, he, like you said, he'd be a top he'd be a top pick if we knew he was the guy in that mm-hmm. offense. Um, you know, a guy I want to throw out to you guys. I've talked about him with almost everybody I've, I've spoken to recently on podcasts and in person and everything else. Um, Ezekiel Elliott. You know, I know he's been the hot name, but you know, currently the six week suspension. We saw a report today from Mike Florio saying he may play Week One. Again, we don't know what's going to happen with the appeal and whatnot. He's going as the sixth pick in the second round in redraft <laughs> leagues. Are either of you on board with that? I am not. <laughs> I tend to think anybody, man, that's six games is too too much for me or too long for me, man, for a, a, a pick that high. Uh, I need you there week one through week mm-hmm. six. You know, by that time I could be 0-6 and, and I'm getting uh, talked about. I'm looking at my own media videos with people dogging me. So. <laughs> there you, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I can't take that chance, you know. I'm not a I'm not a big risk taker by any means, but yeah, uh, 
you know, there's too many other guys out there. Uh, I think, honestly, I would take uh, Le'Veon Bell before I took Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, the holdout is fine. Uh, you know, he's been hurt before within the first two weeks or had that, you know, the three, uh, was it three game suspension and he's yep. uh, been able to still uh, perform. Uh, so that's a little bit safer, you know, for me. Zeke, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't take that chance, man. Six weeks, that's too big of a hit for me. I'll tell you, I took him off my draft board. I have Fair put way. him in the in the list of do not draft under any circumstances. Um, I just can't, uh, you know. Then because not only does he their week six is a buy, so really if he if he plays week one because of Peel, you're now we're looking at week eight yep. next time you see him. Um, and I understand why the Cowboys may want to appeal and play him week one, but for fa- for me as a fantasy guy, I, I can't. I mean, if he's going to miss weeks two through nine. Wow, I I don't even know if he's a twelfth round pick. Yeah, I mean it's it, it, it becomes it's, 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 it's scary because you know I, I was again someone else I was talking to brought this up and I didn't even think about it because typically who's thinking about fantasy playoffs now? We haven't even started the season. But he said if he appeals and they continue to push back the appeal and then he gets suspended through part of the fantasy playoffs through the end of the season, mm-hmm. like you're screwed, you know, because you probably yeah. gave up a top pick for a guy that carried you and now. You don't have them. Again, far-fetched. We're talking about what-ifs and, you know, butterflies and everything else. But mm-hmm. it, it's it could happen. Um, so, to me, I agree. I mean, he's not off my board, but he's at a price where I won't get him in any draft because someone else will gamble before me. I'm like you, Jeff. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a risk taker when it comes to stuff like this. I typically play it a little bit safer. Yeah, and I don't want to clog up my lineup either with having to take McFadden or – Morris, you don't know who the backup's <laughs> going to be, man. So now i got to get four other running backs to- <laughs> you know, right. start you know those first six games. So yeah, I'm like, I, I'll just pass, man. But that's just me. <laughs> and then can we acknowledge that the Cowboys play the Seahawks week um, 16? I, I and Jeff, I mean, would you really count on any running back in that game? That game, that Seahawk defense looks good so far, and I wouldn't want to have in the championship game my best running back, quote unquote, going against the Seahawk defense. Well, that scares me, too, because I have a two-quarterback starting league, and I have Dak Prescott as <laughs> one of my <laughs> quarterbacks. And when Michael Bennett already says, Dak, we're coming for you, I'm like, great. Uh, yeah, I hope I've got somebody on the bench that I can throw in there that is not uh, Josh McCown. McCown. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you Two do words, that. Jeff. Sam Bradford. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> I don't know that either of those options are great ones to bank on. Um, I think I'd roll Dak. Um, but, uh, you know, Jeff, the bright side here for you is if it goes south, you can get on media and just, you know, pour your heart out and, and let it go. So that that's the upside here, I guess. The one consolation I have. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's that's the one, uh, the one good thing. Um, all right, Jeff, is there anybody you've had your eye on here, whether he's late in drafts, early in drafts, or somebody you love or absolutely hate uh, that you've seen kind of up and down the, the draft board so far? Well, you'll appreciate this. It's a guy that I've fallen in love with because he actually helped me win my league last year. I'm just hoping that this is just a case of the preseason drops is my man Tyreek Hill. <laughs> love him, man. Swiss Army Knight, gadget guy, you know. But now that he's a number one receiver, I'm just – hoping that Andy Reid can still push him all over the field. He's not going to be returning kicks, um, but, you know, just hoping Alex Smith, man, can get him the ball. Um, that's that's about it. That's my guy. That's cool. My guy. I'm hoping uh, he pays dividends for me this year. All right. I mean, again, Chiefs bias. Love him. Love the hell out of him. The wide receiver won now. Um, you know, they're going to feed him the ball. There's no question. Um, I think – it depends what he, what your roster construction looks like when you get him. Um, and that's a bit of a hedge answer, but uh, I'm afraid that he is going to become a little bit more boom and bust um, just because defenses have had a little more time with him. Um, exactly. You know, <laughs> as a Chiefs fan, love it. Great. Let's do it. Watch him on Sundays. He's going to score. He's going to make the big play for sure. From a fantasy perspective, I just don't feel as solid um, about him. He's going to be great. Just he may be a little more boom and bust than consistent as he was with scoring points. Um, because I think, again, they feed Kareem Hunt. I think it's Alex, Alex Smith's show all year long. Um, I just don't know uh, what will happen with Hill. I actually drafted him in uh, our last mock draft that we put out in our draft guide this year. 
And the way my team fell, he was my wide receiver too. Um, and I was still a little uneasy with the guys that took after him. So again, it's your tolerance and how you feel with the other guys, but he's going to be good. There's no question. They don't have anybody else to give the ball to. It's, you know, Travis Kelsey across the middle and then Tyree Kill. So right. Right. his his value is there. He's not going to, you know, bottom out. Um, you know, and without Jeremy Macklin, they have to they have to open up the field. So I yes. like him. Just lost the construction. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Definitely, definitely. Other guy, though, I did want to throw out there. <clears throat> if Mark Ingram gets hurt or Adrian Peterson just doesn't uh, fit the bill, man, I love Alvin Kamara. I think mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, if he gets his chance in that Saints offense, man, he is going to explode. So I play in a keeper league, so, you know, I always draft – guys like that very late and just stash them and see what happens see what they become it's worked i've had uh that's how i got russell wilson uh you there know you go. years ago man just happened to take a flyer on him and got to keep him for three years man and he helped me uh, win a couple of times so great i mean I, I love it you know i mean again this isn't a keeper league adp but he's going and at the ninth pick in the 12th round in redraft league so Again, if you want to stash a guy, you, you talk about AP. Uh, again, we'll throw it over to you in a second, uh, William, just to touch on AP and what you expect maybe with him in New <laughs> Orleans. But, you know, AP, we'll see what he's still got in the tank, what he looks like. The Saints, you know, we believe here at Let's Talk Fantasy Football hate Mark Ingram um, because from a fantasy perspective, they never want to consistently use him. Is he in the end zone? No, nope, we're going to hand it off to C.J. Spiller. What? Um, so, you know, realistically, they, they draft Kamara, and you got to think, they're going to want to use him. So for you, especially in the keeper, if it's not this year, I got to imagine his stock is way up next year for what you, what you paid this year. Exactly. exactly. Well, what do, you, what do you think about AP in New Orleans though? Because do you, do you believe he can be that piece that they need or is he kind of, he's done? I think it depends on their O-line. I mean, it's interesting. If you watch Sunday night's game with the Vikings, you saw them talk about cook and uh, Murray picking up the blitz, which Adrian could never do with the Vikings. Yep. Even with Favre back there, it was always a liability. So if the Saints offensive line, which is a big question mark, can play with five and not have to keep a running back um, back there, then I think Adrian has a good role on the team. But if it becomes where the running backs depend to, to help in pass protection, um, then no, I, I don't think. And if they are in shootouts – I don't even know how he's designed for it, but if if their offensive line can play and their defense is decent in the third or fourth quarter, if he's fresh and they just need to run the ball, he will be dangerous for them. Okay. Fair, fair enough. A- AP, we'll see. We'll see what the Saints do. I mean, again, we know they're going to sling the ball. Um, we got our boy Ted Gid down there. Maybe that big, <laughs> the big win for somebody. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I agree. There's going to be a lot of, it's a lot, a lot of interesting things to watch with the saints, um, but that's a great stash by you. Yeah, for sure. Camara for our keeper league value mm-hmm. through the roof. Um, you know, and again, keepers, you're talking cream hunt, all the rookies. That's a whole nother, whole nother podcast in and of itself because of <laughs> exactly. that. <is>. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. Is there anybody else guys that, you know, you want to throw out there? We got time for one more name. If there's somebody you guys love, hate, uh, or just want to talk about in general. Matthew Stafford being the richest quarterback in the NFL now. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, again, if, if anybody's having a bad day, as long as you're not a Lions fan, I guess it's looking up. Um, wow. $27 million? Woo. I, I wish I could walk into my boss's office and tell him I was worth $27 million. Jesus. In six years. I mean, so if it's a bust for them, this is – that's a risk. It's catastrophic. I like him, but that's – it's – 27 million and as a viking fan and now what do the packers do i mean rogers is only making 22 million i don't know yeah 27 million wow well i'll okay. tell you he's on my roster and it messed up my strategy i picked him up just thinking that he was going to be p- playing for uh his uh his contract here <laughs> we're getting it extended and now they've given yeah. it to him i'm like great so he yeah. can go out there and throw about four interceptions in a game you know doesn't um, matter He's a $27 million man. There you go. Exactly. I want to know if anybody asked Megatron what they think about him getting $27 million. Now that's something you guys should get him on media. Reach out to Calvin, <laughs> see if you can get him to de- get on the app and uh, do a live uh, recording of his uh, his opinion on the contract. That'll, that'll work. Oh, that is yeah. noted. <laughs> Definitely, man. 
<laughs> All right, Jeff, William, I appreciate you guys coming on the show today. Uh, everyone, you can check out media on the uh, Apple App Store. You can check out the website at meediampc.com. You guys are on Twitter at meediampc. From Let's Talk Fantasy Football, you can find our mobile apps on Android and iOS, guys. We also have the Alexa skills in the Amazon App Store. You can literally talk fantasy football with your Amazon Echo. So check those out. We're heading into the biggest draft weekend of the year, guys. So if you haven't been mock drafting, get mock drafting. Jeff, Will, thanks for joining us for Let's Talk Fantasy Football. I'm Nick Shrek. We will catch you on the flip side. This has been Let's Talk Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. 